<laughs> Amazing. First of many. And, right. and I wanted to start with, because I, I always like to start with just things that I've seen more recently. A couple of days ago, I think you posted a beautiful picture of you hugging your horse. Mm -hmm. uh, and you were like, you know, like snuggle time or something yeah, like that. And yeah. I was just like, when, when did horses become a part of your life? And how did you get so close to them? I think I've spent many lifetimes with horses. I think this is very one of many lifetimes that I've had. I grew up in a horse community. So where we grew up, horses everywhere, Tra more trails than there were homes, really. And so I was always around horses and I just was deeply in love with them. And I have no explanation. And that's why I say I feel like in past lives, I have just been around horses. Yeah. So since I was a really young kid, loved them and continue to love them my whole life. <laughs> They're just the best. They're the most majestic and gorgeous and spiritual. They feel everything. I just like it's such an honor to be in their presence and to be able to do what I can do with my horse. I find so magical that I can stand in her stall with her and just like vibe out with her. I, I like <laughs> sometimes come to like a little, get a little teary eyed when I'm standing in my stall with her. Cause I'm like, this is so cool that you allow me to do this. And we have this connection without any words. It's just the best thing ever. So I love them. Yeah. That's so special. I, I have a different teary eyed story with horses, but <laughs> oh, I'll, no. I'll, tell, I'll tell you the short version. So when I proposed to my wife, mm -hmm. who I can't wait to introduce you to, when I proposed to her, which was eight years ago or something like okay. that, when, when I proposed to her, I organized a very, what I would consider like a very, a very Hollywood proposal. It mm -hmm. was, it was too over the top and <laughs> I would do it totally different today oh, with all, everything I've learned. Happens. But yeah, it happens. It happens. And so we were walking to by the Thames in London, which is where we're both born and raised. Mm -hmm. And this acapella group jumps out and they're singing Bruno Mars. <laughs> and then like they give her a bouquet of flowers. And then I get down on one knee. I propose we have dinner by the river. And then oh. we walk around the corner and there's a horse driven carriage to take us around, okay, uh, to take us around London. And so we're on this carriage. We have this beautiful you know, path through London. And then we get into the train to get back home to her parents okay. to tell them, and they already knew. She's got hives all over her face. No and way, all over she her was arms. allergic? She's allergic to no. horses. And oh I found out the day I proposed to her, I was like, all right. So then she was like, she had tears. And when we got back, her parents were like, what did you do to her? At like, least you got to enjoy the moment. At it least you got to enjoy after, the moment. Yeah, it wasn't right? until after. But, but no, I, oh, I love horses. <laughs> no, I love horses the same way you do. Like I, I used to go to India a lot when I was yeah. a kid. And that's where I first learned to be with horses. Mm -hmm. And it I was, mean, they're so therapeutic. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a reason there's equine therapy. It's the best. But exactly. Yeah. They make me, they make me when I'm with her, I have a few, but I'm most, mostly with one of my horses right What's now because her, name? her name's Delandra. I um, didn't name her. She yeah. came with her name, okay. but I call her Dylan or Dill. Um, I love her so much, but when I'm with her, I, I genuinely, I speak of like, or I, sp I spoke about how I've just loved horses my whole life. I, I feel like a kid around her. Like I feel like my 12 year old self that would get up every morning at, throughout the entire summer at 8 a.m. to go just be at my trainer's facility. And I would stay there from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'd ride all her horses. I'd groom all her horses. I would just sit in the stalls with all the horses. Like it just, anytime I'm with her, I just have that sense of like being a child again. And it's a really, really good feeling. Yeah. So Animals happens. have that special They're ability, great. don't they? Like They're so awesome. Whichever animal you're attracted to. And yeah. I, I've, I never thought I would, but when I lived as a monk, the animal that's revered in India is cows. And wow. you would never think of cows being like majestic or, yeah. you know, in that way, yeah. especially when you're not in India, but the cows in India have these like lotus like eyes, like the eyes are just like absolutely Gorgeous. stunning. Yeah. yeah. And they're so special and they're such gentle animals. Yeah. And recently Radhi and I went uh, trekking with gorillas in Rwanda <gasps> and gorillas are the, we have to go. Uh, that sounds unreal. It was unbelievable. And wow. they're the animal that's revered in mm -hmm. Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So whenever they have a new gorilla that's born, they have a naming ceremony with the community. And I it's, love that. It's so beautiful. But And then I heard somewhere that you your first job was you were a dog walker. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was thinking like, do you have any lessons or anything you learned by being a dog walker? I think first jobs are so interesting. Yeah. No, I mean... I was always a super disciplined child, like meaning to my, like I just loved, I would put myself to bed at 7 p.m. Be like, my mom would be like playing with me and my little sister and be like, mom, it's seven, I gotta go to sleep. Like it's time for my bedtime. She'd be like, are you okay? <laughs> and so I was always that kid. And so I, I think I just was always really eager to like work. I don't know why. I just like wanted to always have something to do, something that I felt passionate about that I really enjoyed. And so, yeah, when I was young, I 
put some flyers around our community and said I would walk dogs. And I ended up getting people <laughs> that would get let me have their dog for a few hours and take it for a walk. So I loved animals and I liked having something to do. So I spent I was a kid that liked to be by myself with animals. So wow. like I think that that was a cool very fitting thing for me because I got to be by myself walking, but then also experience all these little dogs with yeah, me. So. Yeah, I wish I did that. I used to deliver newspapers. So that was my first job. And it's not as glamorous in London because it's raining. Was that what you were desiring or was no, that? No, I was just 14 like, years old yeah. and wanted to make some yeah, money. Yeah, you're just like, I need it. I was like, I need to cash, make some money. Right? Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to start doing this. And you don't get to, you know, you'd see it in the movies where the paper boy just like chucks the paper at the door, mm -hmm. but I'd had to actually go and put it inside. <laughs> no. So my only interaction with dogs is they were on the inside grabbing oh, the paper. Right, right. And so, yeah. They're barking at you Yeah, they're stuff. barking <laughs> and stuff. But I always love knowing about people's first jobs and, and yeah. how things started for them because of, you know, obviously where you are today.